I'm Tom Smith. My wife Sylvia and I are running a family apple orchard here in East Dorset that's been in our family since the early 1960s. Um, my father was a commercial fruit grower here in Vermont. We actually moved to Vermont in 1946 where he managed an apple orchard here in East Dorset um, called Green Peak Orchard, which is about five miles from here. And it was a 150 acre orchard. Um, interesting story of how he came to be managing that orchard. Um, my dad spent three years in the South Pacific during the Second War. And when he came back from that, he didn't talk about it at all. And he decided he didn't want to live in the city, which was Washington, D.C., where uh, he worked and we lived in Arlington, Virginia. Um, so it turned out that during the war, my mother had spent some summers up here in East Dorset. And she had met uh, Carlton Howe, who was a local big politician that was a state senator, and he also owned several orchards. And he told my mother if her husband ever wanted a job, that he'd be happy to have him come up here and manage one of these orchards. So he did. Um, and we moved uh, off of Overlook Road to uh, where uh, there was a 150 year old house at one end of this, this 150 acre orchard. Lived there for three years, well, five years, while he um, learned the orchard business and eventually scraped together enough money to buy an orchard up in the northern part of the state in South Hero. And then we moved up to South Hero where he eventually had two orchards. When we moved here from Virginia, um, it was kind of like we, you might have come from Mars. Uh, there were 22 people on the party line telephone system. Um, and after a telephone call with our grandparents back down in Virginia, um, you could pick up the line again and hear people saying, oh, that was interesting. <laughs> and uh, so here we had like four rings, four longs and three shorts was our ring for what one was supposed to be our phone call. My father got uh, launched in the orchard business and um, eventually there were a couple orchards up in South Hero. When we moved there in 1952, it was, uh, the island had only had a road out there since 1936. And uh, so people, um, there were about seven surnames that accomplished 85% of the population. We were the only Smiths in the county. And uh, in contrast to East Dorset, we might have come from Pluto when we moved to the islands. So I ended up eventually going to high school down in Massachusetts um, because there's no public high schools in Grand Isle County and still not today. And in those days, the road um, was not really usable in the winter to get over to the mainland. So. Um, we ended up, I ended up growing in a, up in the apple orchard business, went off to Cornell where I met Sylvia, and then was in the military for what I thought was going to be two years, it turned out to be five, because we had this little thing called the Vietnam War. Uh, fortunately, I spent the Vietnam War in West Germany, but unfortunately it meant that I spent five years in the army instead of three, instead of two. But um, when we got out, I uh, went back and got a master's in engineering, worked in various places around the country in Wisconsin and Rochester, New York and in um, southern New Hampshire and various machinery and industries. Then um, we moved to Atlanta and we'd been four years in each place and we thought well we'll be four years in Atlanta. We ended up being 21 years in Atlanta and uh, when my mother retired in 1997 when she was 87 and so that's when we came back to get this orchard restarted. And she lived long enough to see it um, reopen. Uh, my father passed away in 1980. And so my mother managed with the help of, of Fred Doan across the road to keep it going as a pick your own operation, no longer a commercial orchard, just pick your own. Um, and then it was sprayed by, from the air with an airplane and that guy retired. When he retired, she said, okay, that's it. And so that's when we came back, got it started again, and um, have had an interesting project to um, clear a lot of the abandoned trees. We planted 1,200 new trees. We have about 100 of the original um, 19, eight, 1940 trees that are now 81 years old that are out here and still producing. In fact, this year they had a very, very good crop. And 
particularly when all we had was the youngest trees here, um, they gave us enough fruit to uh, be able to reopen um, where the young trees, if we were getting 100 bushels a year, it was more than we could use, but it wasn't enough to deal with the, the customers. So since that time, in this 20 years, as these trees have matured, we've gotten more production. The local support has been very strong. We've had a lot of, of uh, both local people, a lot of second homeowners, and a lot of tourists that come in regularly to pick the apples. I've quit putting signs up down on Route 7 because we get too many people. The house we're looking, looking at back here um, was uh, an original farmhouse on, on what was the Harris property uh, that uh, um, was basically a, a Vermont hill farm. In the mid-1930s, the town took it for back taxes and um, gave life tenancy to the widow Harris, which uh, she lived there about four more years before she passed away. Then the town sold it to the Parsons family. But uh, today, if they took your property for back taxes, in general, they don't give you life tenancy. <laughs> but uh, that was not, um, I've, I've heard of it in other towns too. Um, so um, at any rate, the Parsons family bought it. Um, and in 1940, they had this um, 40 acre orchard planted. And um, after the orchards were sold up there, which was the late 60s, I believe, um, they spent the summers here um, grew the crop and then went back to Virginia um, in the wintertime in central Virginia where they were uh, lived at that point. And um, then my father died in 1980 and my mother was able to keep it running uh, just as a pick your own operation then with the help of, of uh, Fred Doan from uh, across the road. And and she lived in that house? My mother lived in, in this house in the summertime. Uh, the water came from Otter Creek down the hill. <laughs> there was no well. Uh, there was a wood stove. Not much insulation. The curtains would stand out from the, from the, the side of the, of the windows. Uh, when we moved back up here in 1999, um, the, we started construction on the White House that's next door. And it was started in March. It was supposed to be ready um, at Thanksgiving. Instead, it was ready by Easter. So we did spend one winter in that house. Uh, the builder felt sorry for us and piled about 200 bales of straw around it so that the curtains only stood partway out from the windows instead. Uh, we, we moved here from Georgia. We had two seven-year-old Shih Tzu dogs and they were completely unaccustomed to winter. But we made it and they finished our, our house and so We've used this house since as a as a uh, guest house for visitors, and drain the pipes in the winter, and, and uh, it's been very handy because we now have uh, three daughters and um, eleven grandchildren. So when they all show up at the same time, you need a place to put them. We were we were thinking that we would move to um, New Hampshire when when we retired in Georgia because we love the seacoast area, and we thought maybe we could come over on the weekends and run the orchard. And then we came up in 1998 one time when his mother wasn't here and we were f totally free to plan our own schedule. And, and I think the birds probably suckered us in because um, they were all over the place. Beautiful goldfinches sitting outside the window and we saw indigo buntings when we looked out the bathroom and Tom was mowing and the swallows were flying around. So on top of that, in 98, the orchard had been shut down for what, a couple years already? I think in 97 yeah, was his right. last year. And Fred showed us this clipping that said, you know, goodbye to an old friend. And it was really heartrending. And we realized that the trees were dropping their leaves. They weren't going to wait. And we, so we decided to accelerate our departure from Georgia. And at the same time, our daughter was diagnosed with cancer and was being treated in Boston. So everything conspired to bring us up earlier. And Basically, you know, Sylvie moved to Boston. Yeah. I went back to my company and said, my wife has moved to Massachusetts. I need to find a way to move to New England. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was by that time, that was 1999. So um, that brought us up here earlier. And, and we, we had, had had this idea that I could stay one summer and water the trees, we could plant them, and he could go back to Georgia and work. And that wouldn't have worked either because you needed to be here to do more than that. So anyway, we soon learned that you couldn't run an orchard on a weekend only. So, so that was the first part of education. 
also it was such a beautiful spot that we decided that we wanted to keep it open to people and if we wanted to do that we had to be able to to make it pay we had to you couldn't just you know keep these trees and say everybody come in here and enjoy them and not have some income so we began to look seriously at how we could do that and we got a lot of help from UVM extension and we learned a lot and of course his experience helped us right yes it did yeah so we ended up clearing a lot of the, of the abandoned trees and over the the next dozen plus years we put 1200 semi-dwarf trees in here which are what are producing now about every two years we started planning and you know you have to order ahead so we just learned a whole lot as we went and the and its project has just grown you know step by step by step including the latter parts like adding a cool room so that we could keep cider without having it too warm and that we could put our apples away at night and um, I think the, almost the last thing we did was add the customer restroom and, and but then then we got into the donut business which ended up we had been purchasing them down in Manchester but our supplier was no longer able to supply them when I called him up in August and uh, three years ago and he said sorry I can't do it because I don't have enough help and so in the space of two weeks, we bought a donut machine and yeah. figured out how to run it. Yeah, and yeah it, was, it was exciting, back to the fire. And of course, we didn't ask our kids about this. They already thought we were crazy, but um, we were open last year. A lot of people think we were not. Yeah. Actually, we had no idea what would happen, and we were very concerned about making a safe, a safe you know, experience for people and also for, for us and for Tom particularly. So we, we worked out this change of flow so that people didn't all flood into the barn and that people leaving didn't meet people coming, you know, did a one-way flow and it worked beautifully and people flooded into the orchard from the opening day last year. From Labor Day to the 1st of October in four weeks. They were, they were, we, so, we were, by 1st of October we were picked out. They were so crazy to get outside. They didn't, you know, they just, like the rest of us, they were just tired of the pandemic. So we were amazed and also somewhat overwhelmed by the crowd. And that was our, actually our biggest harvest to date, the one we had last year during COVID, four-week harvest. This year, we didn't know what to expect. We figured people would be tired of the pandemic. Would they come? Well, the answer is they still came. Not quite as many, but more people overall, so that this- Over six weeks instead of four, right. we had more customers yeah. and more apples went yeah. out the door than last year. Right, probably 10% bigger than last year. And that's partly just that we are getting more referrals, I think, on social media. So it's been a bit of a surprise. It's also the donuts. We think the donuts are bringing people up. Mm -hmm. <laughs>